<laughs> Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. We're still uh, having the conversation with Dr. Carlo Dikakalo, former Minister of Finance. There's been a lot of focus about how, uh, I mean, it's age long conversation, diversifying our economy. We see different policies that government bring in time and again to see that that happens. And I think they're emphasizing on that more now that we have this dwindling oil prices. Why do you think that we don't seem to have succeeded in diversifying the economy? Hmm. Well, there will be no one simple answer, but clearly, um, if you don't allocate resources, I go back to the fundamental issue of pricing. See, it is the, it is the allocation of credit, the allocation of uh, financial institutions in, in, in space context where you, are, you make sure that we, we, we send the banks out, not just uh, out of Broad Street, if you like, out of uh, Kakao and uh, uh, Marina, into the villages, into the hinterland. You create institutions that are people friendly. Uh, you create institutions that don't require so much uh, bureaucracy in managing and so on and so forth. And uh, again, taking from the example of the East Asian Tigers, you know, as I said, here is a country that had very poor coal, very poor wood. Go to Korea today, as we were talking about reserves, they, they, their reserve level is about 200 billion, you know. Uh, when I worked on Korea, their growth rates could reach something like 16 percent in real terms per year. Exports were doubling within one year, mm. uh, you, you know. know? So, so the question is, we didn't give the signals to the producer. We didn't make uh, infrastructure, as I said, there are so many reasons. Infrastructure, you have to have the roads, you have to have the access, you have to have water, and of course, the almighty power. <laughs> if you look at every single one of these areas, we made colossal mistakes, you know? Power, for instance, we, the last time I was there, we were discussing power privatization. As far as I can see, uh, I had uh, hoped that by now we'll have gone back to review what, what was done. You know, I mean, we are all fired up by the new administration in terms of its readiness to repair and move things. But we have to be ready to do the restructuring that's required. Those who are not able to perform should be shown the way out, compensated, get the people who can do because there's nothing in telecoms or power that, you know, I was driving down here, the roads are like a rubble. You don't have smooth roads anywhere. Who are the contractors? Who are, how, what standards do we impose on those who do these jobs and so on and so forth? It's those are the things that constrict our ability to come up with new products. And we have new products, but they are not being produced in large enough number. That's why we continue to have this figment, which is only figment in our imagination that all we have is oil. If you look at our export basket, you see there are so many things. If anybody changes their foreign exchange at the border and comes and buys yams or shoes or handkerchiefs or what have you, that is as good as the oil that you export beyond our borders. So the diversification is a function of the level of activity for each one of these tradable goods. For the Asian tigers, you talked about yes. a certain level of discipline. Um, yeah. which some people will say that we have lacked or we now currently lack. And that's why I asked you that question about whether or not we've missed our window of opportunity because we started about the same time with the Asian tigers, but look at where they are and look at well, where we are. Well, you know, I worked on, on the Asian tigers. Yeah. I, I, I remember coming by here in the mid-70s and a lot of my colleagues who were actually traveling through back from uh, Korea and I needed to stop at home, so... Some of my colleagues traveled with me. We were staying on VI there, and every one of us was so excited. The idea was that this was going to be one of the new Koreas. I'm talking about 40 years ago, really, 1975, 76. That's why I'm afraid. So, right so okay, what, what, what I'm landing is that it's not easy to say that we are so much less disciplined, but over time, we've not really improved that discipline. The Koreans, there were always problems, you know, there would be scandals about housing, scandals about this contract or that contract. 
Uh, there was a, a sense of free willing. There were Koreans who were not so ready to patronize their own beautiful ties and suits and so on. There were always those who preferred to still go to Europe. So they had the same elements that you see here. But by and large, I think uh, in the majority of the cases, like you can say, uh, on a statistical level, <laughs> or the whole, they were more disciplined, but it doesn't mean that that was much more a factor here. Because if we look at, say, the tastes that we had and the population that had that taste yes. in the 70s. And the income distribution and, and the tax structure. At that time. Right. It's very different from what we have now. I mean, now we're almost import dependent as a country. Do you think that we can we can go back to where we were in the 70s? And that's why I asked you that question about whether or not we've missed our window of opportunity. You say no. No, no, we, we can go back by changing the policies, by changing the leadership, by creating structures that, uh, that obstruct people tending to just veer off the way we have been doing. Like our tax system, for instance, you and I know very well that a lot needs to be down to the tax structure to come up with anything like uh, compliance at the level that you should see in a medium income country. Let's face it, because uh, services are not provided as they should, we're able to live with very low tax compliance. By the time you, people really pay for what they do, then you, you are using that to guide the pattern of expenditures. You are using the extra revenue to invest in infrastructures, to let, uh, increase the, So all of this is have to work together. We can't go back. We, it's not like we've lost it. Mm -hmm. we, we've not developed our uh, solid minerals. We've not developed our forestry. Mm -hmm. We're still down, down in terms of uh, level of... Uh, productivity in our various products, we still have so much room to improve, and that's how we have to go back. Do you think that it's a, well, you have criticized that uh, a decision not to collect dollars, you know, no, no deposit, as it were, of our export, you say that the CBN has come back on that. What did you make of the banning of the 40 items or 41 items that the, that the CBN put a lead on? No, <clears> that, that is retrogressive. That's very retrogressive. You don't think that I was going to spur uh, some action in house for us to look in what and see what no, it is no, that we what could produce? No, no. What is not the banning. You have to be more proactive. Are you providing credit? Are you providing the infrastructure? Those are the things that you need to do. Not, not you see, at, at one space, we, we don't think somebody should be determining our taste for us. We say, oh, people should not be importing toothpicks. But it's not to say it and ban it, it's to make sure we produce the toothpicks by creating the incentives, the credit. You direct some of these things. That's what the Ministry of Commerce and Industry should be doing. That's what the major banks like BOI should be involved in funding. Heavy industry, we make so much song and dance about small industry, but the small industries, medium industry grows because the large industries are demanding intermediate and, and uh, basic inputs from them. So it's a mesh of inter-industry relationships. So you have to be encouraging all, like, all skills of production. But here, uh, BOI is still running around behaving like it's a, a medium industry bank or even smaller. They should well, uh, be the big ones well, who are... I understand they said that they've got uh, a lot of funds that is usually there, but people can come up well, with meeting the standards to access those loans. Yeah, but you see, so that's a task for this system. How do people, they have to be informed, they have to be trained, they have to be guided. BUI should be a major player now. I used to say that to the former occupant of that position. They should be a major player. They should be the conduit for bringing medium and long-term financing, foreign exchange and local currency to develop those industries that will be making demands on the smaller and medium scale industries. So there's a whole disconnect there and that is why all those go feedback into our import bill. We're importing things that we should have been producing. Yeah. Look at the assembly plants where we should be 70, 80 percent or higher in terms of local content. All of those seem to have collapsed because nobody paid attention. And you don't think that a ban is something that would make us look in what? No, ban is not. A ban is a crude, crude way to go about it, and it doesn't work. You have to be much more like what? explicit. Do we, do we come up with policies to protect local industries here? Well, you see, protection has two effects. You can protect by allowing those you are developing room to develop, but you don't protect them where they now produce rubbish because they think. Oh, but there will still be standards be no, that they have to meet. Yeah, so it's not banning. It's, there are so many stepwise uh, 
policies that you use to encourage them in a very seamless fashion. So they can come up, they are, they are, they are encouraged because the competition is not so high, but it's also not zero. And then you guide them through. And, and you are talking about a multi-sectoral approach in agriculture, in manufacturing, in the service sector, in, in every sector. We're talking about Nollywood, for instance. You know, we, we can do a lot to assist Nollywood in terms of uh, their locations, their, I don't know the whole details, but there's every opportunity for the government identifying that this is one area of uh, advantage that we have to talk to the people, what do they need? You know, and many of them have done so much without being helped. And you can see so many other sectors that should have grown in terms of uh, modernization and expansion and deepening and, uh, uh, you know, the manpower requirements and so on and so forth. About the states, I mean, you have a lot of, ex uh, a lot of experience there as well, but many always say that the states don't seem to be living up to their capacity and expectation. What do we need to do to ensure that look, they, they also generate more funds such that they shouldn't be talking about sacking people because they can't pay salaries? Well, the, the top of it was I, I heard a governor friend who said uh, the bank stopped lending, so he stopped paying salaries. I thought this was so absolutely <laughs> unbelievable. Let's not go into that. But no, no, I think let's not dichotomize. The same problems we are having at the federal is what we're having at the states, is what we're having at the and the local government. All of them need capacity. All of them need uh, our strengthening our educational institutions, our training institutions. All of them need our sustaining improved infrastructure so they can work. This notion that at the local government they just meet and just share the money sounds always funny, but I don't know how that happens. But exactly. So when you speak about you know institutions that should reach the local people, and local government <laughs> is one of them. Uh, That's very have, far from the people. You, you, in many cases, you no, have to no, ask. So you know, we, we have to be serious about this. The things. problem also again boils down to discipline because it was it was seen that we've set up some of these institutions in the past, but corruption again. I agree. I agree. And another issue is uh, you see we've opted for a federal structure. But you see, we, we, we have to grow the federal structure. When you start with the federal structure and there's somebody in the local government who is the constitution,